40 grades and OU20 may sound like something you get for handing in your homework late, but they, or other things like them, may have a great deal of significance for life in space. To understand this role, however, we first let's take a closer look at what these two very different living organisms actually are. Starting with the better known of the two, the tardigrade, which has also been given the name of the water bear due to how it looks and moves, and also that it originally evolved in fresh water. However, any real resemblance to a bear ends when you consider its size and its diet. Tardigrade is less than a millimetre long and generally eats microscopic plants or even bacteria. What's really interesting is that tardigrades are what's known as an extremophile. That is, a living organism which can survive in extreme conditions, but will very quickly kill almost every other living organism. But, unlike most extremophiles, it isn't just capable of existing in one extreme condition, but many. Tardigrades can be found in, at the poles, deep in the oceans, on mountaintops, in deserts, and are even likely to be found in your average back garden. However, the key to surviving extreme conditions when the tardigrades are just so very small comes down to a survival strategy being able to survive arid conditions. When external conditions become very dry, tardigrades go into a form of suspended animation called an hydrobiotic state, which basically dries the little animal out and is uh, only reversed when water returns and the tardigrade revives. And going to this state doesn't actually adversely affect the tardigrade and its actual lifespan is the same even if a tardigrade spate some looks like in this dormant state. The method of survival relates to how, in emergencies, uses sugars to basically coat the outside of the cells with a very thin crust, and at the same time, the internal mechanism of antioxidants prevents internal cell damage. This mechanism enables it not only to survive dehydration, but also very low and very high temperatures, also high pressure and low pressure, and high levels of radiation. Now, all of this led scientists to wonder exactly how hardy was the tardigrade, and could it possibly survive in space? And the answer, it turns out, is a qualified yes. Tardigrades have been taken into space and successfully revived later, and those creatures have even gone on to successfully breathe. However, the survival rate for those tardigrades exposed to the full glare of the sun's ultraviolet light was actually rather low. Still, these little creatures are the first animals known to be able to survive in space. Now, this doesn't mean these are the only living creatures able to survive in space. Here we come to the OU20, one of a series of cyanobacteria inhabiting a rock taken from the cliffs in Beer in Devon by scientists from the Open University, hence the label OU20. The rock was then placed on the outside of the International Space Station for 553 days. And OU-20 managed to survive the process. This so, so far is the longest any photosynthesizing organism has been able to survive in space. It's coming through the thick cell walls and also the fact that the cyanobacteria forms in clumps and colonies where the internal bacteria may get protection from their fellow colonies. During the time in space they were subjected to significant changes in temperature as well as intense ultraviolet radiation. After exposure, OU20 were able to live, photosynthesize and reproduce normally. So we have at least one plant and one animal which can at least to a limited extent survive in space. In the next video, look at the implications of this.